Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are doing a post-processing tutorial on the North American Nebula taken with the Dwarf 2 Telescope and we are going to post-process everything in the serial program. So let's go ahead and get right started with it. We're going to point the telescope up to a part of the sky that has no trees or buildings in the way and we are going to go ahead and press on the calibration button. What that is going to do is that it's going to close up the telescope and reopen it to a part of the sky that has no buildings or trees since we already pointed it to a clear area. And it is going to take three different photos of the sky to figure out exactly where in the sky it is. So let's wait for the calibration to finish. Okay, calibration is done. So we're going to click sure and we are just going to scroll down immediately to the North America Nebula. We're going to find it, we are going to click confirm, and it is going to locate the area of the sky where the North American Nebula is located. And then after that, it's going to do a plate solve to figure out exactly where it needs to go to center the object in the night sky. Okay, it is now go to tracking the object, so we are going to now go ahead and set up the settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the feature, we're going to go to our settings, we're going to set our setting time for 15 seconds, and set our gain for 80 we're going to put our infrared light on pass and we are going to now go to feature, go to more. And we're just going to set our count for the photos for 700 images. I feel like this should be a sufficient amount for tonight. So after that, we're just going to go ahead and press the shoot button and that will start taking our image. Okay, so here is our unfinished, unprocessed image. So we're just going ahead and take the data now and take it straight to the computer so we can get started on the post-processing process. Okay, so once you are on your computer, what you're going to want to do is make a serial folder. You're going to open it up and you are going to make a North American Nebula folder since that is what we're going to be processing today on the video. And inside of the North America folder, you're going to want to make a lights folder since we are only using the light files from the Dwarf 2 Telescope because the dark fires files are already stacked into the light. So if you don't already have that, um, just go ahead and paste all of your lights files into the lights folder. And if you want to use your darks, bias, and flats because you're not using the Dwarf 2 Telescope, just go ahead and make your corresponding folders and paste the files into their folder. So after you have that all pasted in, you're going to want to open the serial program. And once you have serial open, there's three things that we're going to have to check for. First thing, we're going to go to preferences. We're going to check and make sure that if you're using the Dwarf 2 telescope, your Bayer mosaic pattern is set as GBRG. And if you are not using the Dwarf 2 telescope, just go ahead and leave this box checked and it will automatically convert to the pattern it needs to be set for. After that, just click apply. And then we want to make sure that we have all of our proper scripts installed. If you do not have these scripts right here, the pre-processing without darks and without dark DBF and without flats, you want to go ahead and check out the video I have on the channel about setting Cyril up and it will explain how to get those different scripts installed into Cyril. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to image processing and we want to go to star processing and check that you have your star net star removal installed. If you do not have it installed, again, I have another video on how to install that in Cyril. Uh, it's just about five minutes long, and again, it's on the channel. Um, if you have everything ready, set up, what you want to do is you want to click the Home button. You want to click on Cyril, and click on the North American Nebula folder, and press Open. That will set the home directory for the North American Nebula, as you can see right up here in the top middle, hands, middle side of the screen. And we're going to go to our script and run the script OSE preprocessing without darks, bias, or flats if you're only using light files. If you want to use your darks uh, and your bias, um, just do the without flat. If you want to use your flats and your bias but you don't want to use darks, then just use the without dark. But for this video, we're using without darks, bias, and flats. So let's just run that script. Once that script is done, we're just going to go ahead and unpause the video. Okay, once the stacking is done, what we're going to want to do is we are just going to go ahead and click on the open button. And we are going to click on our result.fit file, and we are going to open the file. As you can see, the image is completely dark, so what we're going to do is we are going to do an auto stretch. 
and we are going to unlink the image so that it does not have a green tint to it. So now after that is complete, we are going to do a background extraction. And normally I would recommend to do the background extraction uh, automatically, just like this, just generate, and then you do the compute background. But because of how much nebulosity is in the image and how much cosmic clouding there is in the image, it's recommended if you just do it manually. So let's do it manually right now. Image processing, background extraction, and we're just going to click on the points of the sky that we know for sure by looking at images on Google or the NASA website or even just looking at uh, photos taken by other astrophotographers of this nebula just to see exactly where the uh, cosmic clouding and the nebulosity actually is in the image. So we're just going to click on all these different points of the sky. And once you are satisfied with how many squares you have on this image, you can just click on the compute background button and it evens out the image. You can see where a lot of the cosmic clouding is and where the nebulosity is, which is great. So we're going to click on apply. And now we're going to do a photometric color calibration. So let's do that now. Uh, what we do is we go to color calibration here, click on photometric color calibration. And if you're using a dwarf tube telescope, you want to make sure your focal length is set at 51.7 and that your pixel size is at 1.50. Now that might be different based on what kind of telescope you're using, but for the dwarf tube, we are going to be using this uh, resolution, 5.984. Now we want to go to the image parameters and type in NGC 700. And we are going to click on NGC 700 and click OK. And that should automatically rotate the image and give it the nice coloration that is for the video. Now, after you have that complete, what we want to do is we want to go to image processing again. And we are going to click on remove green noise and just immediately click the apply button. Very nice. So now we click close and we click auto stretch and go back to linear mode. And now this is the part where Starnet comes in. We're going to go to image processing. We are going to go to star processing and we are going to click on Starnet star removal. And we are going to pre-stretch linear image and up sample times two. Now what the pre-stretch linear image does is if, because it has no sort of auto stretch done to it or hyperbolic stretch done to it, if you do not do the linear image stretch, then it will not know exactly what is supposed to separate when it comes to stars and nebulosity. So pre-stretch linear image and click execute. Okay, now, now that Starnet is done running, you can actually see a uh, image that has no stars in it at all and you can see the nice nebulosity here in the image uh, it is automatically split to two but just to make sure we're going to click on the open button and we're going to click on starless result dot fit and click open now what we're going to do is we're going to go to image processing and we are going to do our generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation so let's just go ahead and zoom this in to 100 and now because it already did a pre-linear stretch, you can see it's sort of wacky. You can't really just click on a certain symmetry point. You really just have to look for it and do a little bit of trial and error here. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Just click on different points on the bottom of the line. Just make sure it's the bottom and start changing the stretch factor until you are satisfied with how your image looks. Personally, I feel happy with mine like this, but if you are not done, just go ahead and click the pause button and you can come back to us once we are finished. So go ahead and click the apply button and we are going to click close. Next, what we want to do is we want to go to image processing. We are going to do a color calibration. Go to color calibration normal and we are just going to select the background here. We are going to click on the use current selection and do a background neutralization and then we're going to move this to the side and you don't necessarily have to do this part if you only want it to be red if you want it to be this nice red color you can just leave it alone how it is and just put the stars back in it you can just skip to the part where we add the stars back in but because i do not want it to be red i actually want to get a nice hubble looking palette so we're just going to go ahead and select the nebulosity part of the image like this and we are going to go here and use current selection and we're going to click apply 
And as you can see, it actually changed a lot of the color of this image here. It changed it to more of a bluish tone, which is great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to image processing. We're going to do color saturation. And we are going to move this around until we are happy with how color saturated our image is. Now I'm personally fine with how this is. I'm going to click apply and I still see a lot of red in the image, which I don't necessarily want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image processing again, and I'm going to run through another cal calibration. Again, select the background, background neutralization, and once again, select the nebula, use current selection, and click apply. We're going to close it and redo the color saturation. Okay, I'm happy with how the image looks right here. We're going to click apply. And now we are going to try to add the stars back into the image. So for that, we're going to click the save button. And we are going to go back to image processing. And we're going to go to star processing and do star recomposition. Now for this, we are going to just click on the background stretch parameters file. And we're going to import, import our starless result file, click open. And as you can see, it's right here. And then we're going to do our star stretch parameters file. I'll click on it. And we're going to click on our star mask result and click open. Now, as you can see, our stars are coming back. So you can just play around with this part. Um, see how many stars you want back in the image. If you want to go crazy with it, you can. Just add them all back. Just make them giant and bulky, which I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want. But if you want to, I mean, go ahead. It's your image. But for this, we're just going to... Let's try to add a decent amount of stars back into our image. So that we're going to click apply to that. And I can you can also adjust the stretch factor just a little bit more if you would like. And also adjust the black point. Until you are satisfied with your image. I'm pretty happy with how this is. I mean, to get it, then again, it was taken with a one inch telescope, so there's really not much you can expect. But given the fact that you can see all of this nebulosity right here, I find it very nice. So I'm just going to do one final crop of the image. I'm just going to crop it like this. And here is our finalized image. So once your image is finalized, you can go and you can save it as a unique file. And you will find that unique file in your files right here. So here's our finalized image. Uh, hopefully you guys got something much more better than I did. I only used, ended up using 600 light files, which is not very many for a nebula. Um, and again, it was taken with a one inch telescope, which is not the most ideal. So hopefully you were all able to get better results than this one. Um, hopefully it was able to help you guys out a little bit if you did not quite understand what to do before. And I hope you enjoyed the video. So please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. After this video, I'm more than likely going to be working on a process for the Dumbbell Nebula, which should come out with a lot less of the cosmic clouding than this image, since this is actually located in the line of the Milky Way galaxy. So um, again, thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. And I wish you guys clear skies.